Hi there, and welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for CDDA. I'm Icon, and in this episode, we're going to wrap up general basics about city rating. So, we're going to talk about all the things that I have found out about cities so far, and of course, this is an open topic. But this video includes all the information you need to practically survive on your own and die from your own mistakes or new things that you have discovered. Because this is not going to spoiler everything, but yeah, we're going to cover that in this episode. So first off, like I have mentioned in the episode before, cities are brim filled with zombies. Basically, everybody who was in the city before what is now turned into an enemy so you can easily count hundreds if not 1000 zombies or more in that area here i have no clue i've never counted them we can do if we want to so cities are also featuring an abundance of loot these are practically treasure troves because when you look over this in the last episode we did a little bit of a uh of a recon expedition if you look at this, there are several and many houses, but also an urban city block here, an open sewer there, a public space here. Over there, there's an apartment tower, a subway station, a bank, a restaurant, a police station. And as you might already figure, all these places have certain chances of looting something so uh, basically i'm sure that this police station should be a place where we can find access to weapons and i'm pretty sure about that so generally said cities feature really really interesting locations not all of them are really that appealing in terms of loot some of them are just practically a challenge the most infamous of them might be the the mall big large complex filled with zombies but most likely you want to get into cities as quick as possible because there's a lot of things to gather there just like we did in the last episode so here's the ground rules about cities don't enter a city unless you have a weapon medical supplies a shelter where you can rest up and heal your wounds and a ways and means to get to your shelter well the last one is a bit optional but i I'd say, in this particular scenario, being able to walk back to the shelter counts as a ways and means as well. Sometimes we have larger distances to cover, so make sure that your escape car is ready and parked into the right direction. You never might know what you have, what you are running away from when you get to the car. About the car and steer rates in general. When you have a car, it's awesome because you can store your stuff in there capital d to drop stuff somewhere and we're going to leave a couple of items here that we don't seem to need the more stuff you leave behind in your inventory the more carrying capacity you will have so always be sure that you don't carry anything around that you don't need all right here we go so that's why i like to have a car because now we have a, 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 a movable storage that's going to be carrying our stuff for us okay so with these things out of the way the next thing that you need to think about when you're entering a city is where are you going to enter and leave that city like we have noticed in the last episode before there's a wasp hive sitting there which is really terrible but it's not really a big issue we're just going to enter and leave this area from the forest you should always have a a, a a plan where you enter and leave the city because it is a pretty rough work to to chow to, to plow open the the entrances to a city the earlier in the game the harder it is to to carve open your way because right now we really need to be careful about every fight we have a good weapon we have a strong outfit with the eskrima stance and the uh, eskrima knowledge so damage output is really big but our armor so accessible 
by what was it yeah layer this plus icon but when we check out our armor here on the torso we're merely wearing a blazer and shirt boxer shorts this is not exactly the stuff you want to go into the uh, apocalypse with and uh, battle zombies on a daily basis because this is not really protecting us well so here goes my next ground rule when we enter and uh, go for cities pick up a goal have a certain goal in mind for example for me right now the biggest goal i have in mind is acquiring armor because right now well we don't need food that desperately, we don't have a real hideout yet, but I see that we are very very vulnerable and acquiring armor is for me almost as important as a weapon, but when you're good at killing stuff, a weapon outweighs armor by a lot. Armor comes more and more into motion the more enemies you kill, basically. If you only have to kill a dozen zombies or so, armor is not that extremely important sometimes you even get out of it with it without a scratch but when it goes down the hundreds you won't be able to take it down without armor unless you like resting up for days from time to time all right so with that out of the equation we now know what we want to do so that means we are going to set our eyes on something so here this is a rather special situation because an urban city block and an apartment tower are really close to each other. So these houses feature a lot of uh, compart living compartments very close to another and page up. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, the apartment tower is um, a higher building with, with, which has several stories exactly as the urban city block. These houses usually are only single story things with maximally a a basement. Sometimes you have multi-story houses, but yeah. So I'm going to go for the apartment blocks first. So we're also going to check out this ladder here. So you see, there's a ladder. Page up when you're standing on it. And here we could also just uh, enter a apartment via the window but we're climbing up all the way so now we're on the roof being on the roof of buildings is a wonderful thing i'll show you why remember that town we knew nothing about a moment before climbing on a roof is a excellent way of scouting your environment so the higher the roof you can get the better so now we know a little bit more about our environment so this looks like a pretty good neighborhood to raid. In general, the deeper you go into a town, the more dangerous it gets. And here's the third and uh, biggest lesson, or more, mo most uh, life-saving lesson about cities. You will be surprised from time to time with things you have no clue about when you're new to the game especially. So, just to spoiler a few of the more common things. Autonomous uh, sentry turrets featuring a heavy machine gun with a 50 caliber, with 50 caliber rounds. These things can destroy you with two shots. For example, whenever you run into something which looks dangerous and you have no clue about what it is, two things. If you don't mind dying, you might just run into it and check out how it might maybe kills you or you kill it or you avoid it in a large circle until you feel really really powerful or at method three you back up the game and see what it does and explore it a bit it's up to you i really don't want to give you any uh any, any strict rules about that because this is a sandbox survival game just showing options but yeah Next to me is a zombie child. We are going to take down that dude. And last episode, we also picked up a expandable baton, which is now going to carry us a little bit. So we're going to get onto that road here. And roads, well, roads, you're going to see for yourself right now. So we're going to enter this road. There's a grasshopper. Hm. How unexpected. <laughs> well, most of these animals are harmless but yeah here we go so let's check out 
Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a handful of zombies. This is actually less, less horrible than I thought it could be. So, being grabbed. Let's check out this dude. He's almost down, so rather keep clobbering. He took a lot of damage here. When you're pulping zombies, always try to do it as long as there's no zombie right next to you. Go. A Beretta. My god. So whenever you find a firearm, rejoice. Firearms in general are among the most desirable things in this game because, you know, shooting zombies from a safe distance is way less harmful for your health than going into close uh, touch with them. But there's one thing about firearms which I want to disclose before we go into the actual episode for that. They're loud. Loud noises attract enemies. Just one thing you have to take care of. Here's a military rucksack in that, in that, uh, in the possession of that zombie. I'm going to pick that up and drop it at the end of the road because I want to give myself a memo that this is around there. Ow! Zombie runners are really, really disgusting. They're faster than you. It's not a good thing. So the first encounters with the city are always the most hurtful ones because horribly armored like I am the zombies deal a lot of damage to me and here's one thing that I want to uh, point out here so at this point I'm bleeding from several points the HP of my character aren't really that horribly low but I'm under distressing pain my speed is already 15 points lower than usual. My stats are all lowered. This game punishes you harshly for your medical condition. The worse it gets, the worse your fighting gets. So there's two more zombie dogs coming after me. So I'm trying I'm, I'm starting to kite out here. So we're going to run away into this direction and fight the zombie dogs out here. Zombie dogs in general, they're fast, they're good at dodging, but they have way less HP than a regular zombie. So basically zombie dogs are worst for characters who are featuring a not so high fighting skill, and for a decent fighter they are mostly harmless. So since I'm now pretty roughed up and in distressing pain, we're going to use this little shelter up here, because this is pretty safe up here. We can now go up here and start eating one aspirin, for example, to make sure the pain will go away a bit. I'm also going to eat, well, why not a chewing gum? It's just for adding some joy. Joy is pretty important. The more unhappy you get, the worse your condition. And now we're pressing enter and going into the miscellaneous tab. And over here you see, wait for several minutes. On my German keyboard, this, this key is not even accessible. That's why I go over a, <laughs> over a shortcut there. So here we go, wait for several minutes. When you have an alarm clock, which this character has, we're going to set an, we are going to wait a while and we're going to wait one hour. We're going to ignore whatever happens for now. And as you see, we're now under distracting pain only. Let's just wait for another hour. Sometimes it's really worth just uh, sitting back and uh, letting your character chill out a moment to lower the pain level. The higher the pain level of your character gets, the worse he's performing. And, you know, speed is really a very, very important and vital stat. The lower your speed, the easier it will be for your enemies to catch up, but even worse, they're going to attack you more and more often, and it really escalates into a downward spiral once your speed drops severely below 60. So when you're hitting the threshold between 70 and 80 speed, be careful.
you're really close to messing yourself horribly up. So we're now going to take down these bad boys and girls. And I'm trying to clean out as much of the city as possible in a day. So there's a book called Break a Leg. Books are always very, very valuable. And I'm going to create a loot pile here. So just to make sure that I'm not being uh, slowed down by stuff that I find on these zombies. All right, there's a zombie cop and a regular zombie. Zooming out from time to time in a higher distance is quite valuable. So sometimes I like to go like this and zoom in. This is the uh, semicolon and check out like here I see that there's a zombie dog and a zombie back there. You can also check this out while using capital V. It's up to you, really, what you prefer. But for now, as you see here, they also have that exclamation mark in front of their names when they are actually aggro on you. So we're now running away with these dudes because really, less is more. <laughs> So we're going to over here. I like this little corner because it breaks the line of sight with most zombos. Sometimes I even need to remind them that I'm still here. So the dude has grabbed me. Well, we're going to break that grab this time. There we go. Again, police cop. Sick pro. That's another uh, firearm. And with police cops, always check out if they have some really nifty pieces of armor. This one doesn't, but I'm taking the pistol nevertheless. Alright, I even managed to uh, get rid of the other zombie. The, uh... Hey dude, I'm here. Sometimes they get stuck in cars. Zombies are not exactly smart, but what this dude here did was actually really dangerous. Because you remember I talked about noise and how it attracts enemies. You just can't imagine that a zombie banging on a car is really, really making a lot of ruckus. So, yeah, zombie dynamics. CDDA is pretty cool in that regard. So here, I'm checking my HP. I feel as if I'm still capable of taking down one or two Zs. You really need to find your own, your own pacing and how far you go, because every character is different. Every starting gear is different, and therefore you never have the same situation with two characters, even if they are created the same. All right. So I'm slowly clearing out the road. As you see, the road is uh, freer and freer. The more of the, the more we do this. There we go. Laptop computer. <laughs> That's a find. Laptop computers come with nice batteries, but this battery only had 38 points of charge left, so I didn't care. And here, I stopped the moment this dude had the red exclamation mark to move, and I'm just waiting for it. Ah, yeah, dear. He ran into the car. Yo, dude. I'm over here. Yeah. So, he attracted now the fat zombie, but that's okay. Because the distance between me and that dude, we're going to smash the first one. But always keep track of your environment. There's nothing worse than being ambushed by more than two zombies at once. Once they, once you have three of them on your around yourself, the grab gets practically unbreakable. And because every grab lowers your defense rates, the more zombies grab you, the easier they they have it to to hit you and oh meth it's going to escalate from that point on that's all i'm trying to say so there's a zombie dog here a z9 a z9 is a armored canine police police dogs but uh well oh yeah several things that are worth mentioning so first off whenever you get attacked your clothing can get damaged, and at some point, your clothing is completely damaged. And here, we get the readout, the bite wound feels really deep. So, you see here, we have that dark blue color on it. This means we have to act. This means the wound is infected. 
So, what happens from here, you have now about six hours of in-game time to get some antibiotics and treat that wound. Otherwise, what will happen is the you will suffer from a real infection and, well, there's, if I remember correctly, around a 30-ish percent chance that you will just survive that or you'll die of that if you don't do anything. That is. It's all depending on your strength, on your traits, and so on and so forth, but a untreated infection is easily a death sentence to a character, so it's that's why I recommend antiseptics before you enter towns, but yeah, the the apartment tower sends one zombie after another, they just keep coming. Alright, let's retreat for a moment and use our antiseptics. I'm pressing small A, selecting that, and oh, there's a zombie dog. Whenever the readout tells you that something is dangerously close, stop consuming stuff, because this is when the game tells you, dude, this is running at you. Do you really want to continue? 90% of the time the answer is no, I don't. So. Alright. So we're using the antiseptic on the right leg. And if the dark blue color fades, you're healed. Don't you worry, everything is fine. And here the left arm is in yellow condition. Yellow condition is when things start to be in a stage where you need to be worried about. Basically, once the HP of one limb drops to zero, it breaks. If it's the torso or the head, well, you get the idea. That's death. If the other things are, well, a limb can be broken and fixed. There's there's nothing lethal about that directly, but it's a pain to, to heal that, especially in this game. So usually at my in my agenda, that's a good point to to call it off for today. Once that's the, the case, we're going to head over to our hideout. In this case, our, whoops, our car, so capital W twice to travel back to that point. I'm in distressing pain as well, so I guess it's a good time to say goodbye. Oh, wait a second, I forgot something. So sometimes you forget items. Another good time to get back to car, to, to the uh, hideout is when it's growing, when, when the sun is falling down. So our character here has night vision, so you can do awesome things with that, but I'm not going to abuse night vision today. We're going to talk about how you can do great things with that in another, another episode. We, yeah, the zombie dog didn't fall in. Okay. So, let's get into the car and drive over to our hideout control vehicle by pressing enter. Car starting up. It remembers the last speed that you had it on, so we're now. What's that? Say. It seems as if the uh, car I'm riding is damaged, so I'm stopping driving here, and it seems as if I dropped the stuff on the floor here. Oh, dr don't dr step into exhausts, by the way. It's not. It's not that good. Okay. Yeah. Well, it seems as if we're uh, riding kind of a pickup, and if I want to carry stuff there, I need to drop it there, I guess, or here on the uh, on the driver's seat right next to me. But since we're driving home, it doesn't matter. So, taking control of that vehicle again. So, by the way, driving vehicles also gives you another uh, bonus on the vehicle skill. The more often you do it. And that brings you more skill points in driving cars, obviously, which also allows you to drive better, shoot better while driving, fancy stuff. So, wait a sec. While I'm here, let's get out of there and let's see if we can siphon a little bit of the uh, gasoline from the police car. So, there we go. And let's refill the gas tank. Most of the time, 
dogs like these pit bull mix that are running around here are completely harmless. The game does warn you from them though, but you don't need to be too worried about them. As long as you don't get close to them, they won't mess around with you either. Wildlife in general in CDDA is completely harmless. Mutated wildlife though, like this uh, praying mantis there, is a completely different story. So this is going to be our sleeping place for today. So we're going to drive the car around. Ah, oh, dang, there's a boulder, I'm sorry. Well, we, we smashed the boulder though. Oh, well, it's not driving. And now, well, that mantis is definitely up to me. So whenever that happens, if you have a car, you're you're lucky. So you just get into your car, and now you can decide if you want to try to drive uh, to drive against it. Roadkill mantis. So let's do this. There we go. And if we check out the mantis, well, it doesn't really... It isn't really impressed by what we're doing here. So we're driving a little bit around. This thing is really fast, but you can't use your your car as a weapon. So let's do, redo this. And while it's in front of me, Taking a lot of damage, but jeez. Well, okay. Since the uh, mantis is almost dead, I'm stopping the car now and stopping the drive. Zoom in and take it down. There we go. All right. Don't try to kill stuff like that without uh, preparing your kill like that. Even that was still pretty frisky for me. If you want to be sure that you take a safe kill, well, the car is your best friend, but don't stress it out. Everything which is larger than a building, oh, no, <laughs> that's that's too much. But every every really huge enemy, like you will know what I mean when when something like that is in front of you, is something you really need to take care about. So we got rid of that mantis in our backyard with the car. So take this as a expanded lesson how to use vehicles. But we're also bleeding heavily from our head wound. Here we go. So that thing actually did so much damage to me just while we were applying the last strike. A mantis can totally disembowel your character if you're not uh, if you're equipped like I am here. Without the car, I wouldn't have dared to. Okay, so now it's time to patch up ourselves. So for today, we're going to use the bandages in the medical supply kit. Usually, I go a different approach, but we're going to talk about that in a, in a different episode. So bandages go on every wounded part of your body. So as you see here, the left arm is band non as a non-bandaged value, and then it's going to be poorly bandaged. Healthcare gets a rank up whenever it's being used on wounded limbs and such. You get the idea. Bandages are actually the most, one of the most valuable medical supplies you can get. So treat them respectfully. You can create lower quality bandages easily by, your, by yourself, which I'm going to explain in a different episode, maybe the next one. But for today, we're just going to use the prefabricated ones and make sure that you put them onto every more wounded limb. For example, here, my leg, I won't bandage that. This is not, not enough damage for an entirely fine bandage. By the time the other limbs will heal out, this will heal without being bandaged. Because in this game, if you're not bandaged while you're sleeping, you're practically healing almost nothing. Only bandaged limbs heal decently. That's a rule of thumb. So don't try to heal yourself without bandaging yourself. It's going to be almost useless. All right, so we're now in our temporary resort. I mean, now that I've taken down the mantis, this place is actually pretty safe. 
and we we might actually stay here. So let's start dropping our items that we don't need on a on a bigger pile. So I I looted some guns. And as you see here, they have different calibers. We're, we're going to make a gun episode soon, too. For now, I'm dropping all the guns in one pile, all the food stuff on another. There is a method behind my madness. Oh, did I drop water? Let's see. Don't want to. But generally said, it's totally up to you how you sort your base inventory. There's no rights and wrongs there. There's just uh, personal preferences. Okay, so we got rid of all these items and we're also going to drop the military rucksack here. So that's gonna be something for later. Also notice uh, worth noticing my jeans is saying bye-bye slowly because uh, zombie damage, but that's a thing for another time. So. Since we still have a little bit of time before the sun sets, we're going to pick up one of those books. You remember books, capital R for reading them, and we're pre-browsing them here for now. And now we know what we can learn out of these. I'm personally a big fan of reading until the sun drops, because, you know, it's free skill points. So I'm going to read Under the Hood, because it teaches me mechanics. The other book you can can at home. Well, food handling is easy to learn. Mechanics is not that easy to learn. So we're going to read that until we've learned something. But well, it has been not that much time left. So evening time, let's eat something. Let's have a drink of water first. And well, clearly we don't have any quality foods here. Shelled almonds potato chips, pork sticks, but you know, survival ain't pretty. We're going to chow down on that. If you have multivitamin tablets, you can also take one at the end of the day. We're just going to have a grape drink here too, because that's going to in induce joy. Always try to keep your person happy. Okay, so now we do the last check. We're closing the uh, curtains here with a small C button. And now we're getting onto the onto the emergency blanket. And now, go into the miscellaneous tab. This is the button for sleeping. I personally always access it over the miscellaneous tab. It's up to you. It's personal preference. This is the key you need to press to go directly to go directly into the sleeping menu. And am I sure to sleep? Yes, I am. Setting the alarm to not, uh, wake up in nine hours and let's go. So sometimes your character has trouble sleeping, but I'm going to override that. The more comfy stuff you have on the grid where you're trying to sleep, the better. So we're that's why I put down a blanket here and such. And yeah, so we slept the nine hours through. And as you see here, I'm pretty, pretty well off again. The head has some damage still, but could be worse. So let's open up the curtains and have some breakfast. Clean water is also running out slowly, and so are the food stockpiles. But that's enough for one episode. You now know the basics of city raiding. Be careful whenever you go into the city, and head home whenever you have taken too much damage. Next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about crafting. I'm going to start a, a, a brief intro into crafting and some more city rating for the un unavoidable acquisition of crafting materials alrighty guys so thanks for watching drop your comments down below leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and of course feel free to subscribe daily videos coming up here i'd be delighted to have you among the subscribers see you soon bye bye